No, Boudreaux, your warrior poet hat is the best. No, no, seriously, it is the best. It's all clean and woodland. You the man, Boudreaux. I'll protect you from anybody. Like if a bunch of dudes with AKs just popped up and started shooting, I would protect you and that warrior poet hat. Oh no, 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 shoot! I got you, Boudreaux! Coming back! There you are, my sweet prince. The mouse gun protected us. Guys, I don't want to paint myself as some kind of hero, but I totally saved Boudreaux from those AK Ipsic assassins. So. I'm starting off the video with a win. Uh, today we're talking about the CR920. Whereas we've had the MR920, this is like a Glock 19 sized gun. This is just a little guy. It's a little mouse gun. And so you can see the difference right here on the pistol grip is pretty substantial on the muzzle, just the overall weight and also how thick it is. Man, this is far, far nicer to carry. So if you don't like being uncomfortable and carrying big guns, something like a little mouse gun is a really, really nice thing. I've been carrying this now for two days, which is not long, but I'm doing the video because I'm excited. In the spirit of getting ready for this video, I knew I wanted to be able to make sure that we had real good data. So I ended up spending a lot of rounds uh, putting through this and I had three different guns of the CR 920s I ordered uh, so I could test all of them out with uh, just different circumstances running this gun. So guys, you should know the drill by now. We're going to go into some general specs and features. We'll go into some pros and cons. Now this is a war poet gun, right? So there are shadow systems CR 920. However, this kind of trim packaging and all the cuts and aesthetics you want to uh, support warrior poet society. That's kind of our deal, but it doesn't mean I'm going to be easy on the gun because I've got some cons to bring with the pros. However, man, really good gun specs and features. Here we go. So this is a striker fired gun chamber in nine millimeter it weighs 17.8 ounces, has an overall length of 6.37 inches, has a width of 1.05 inches. It is 4.27 inches tall with a flush mag fit it is 4.79 inches extended. Comes with a match grade war poet in gray 416R stainless steel barrel. That's 3.41 inches long and holy cow, that is too many numbers already. Textured polymer receiver has a blade safety trigger, which breaks around four and a half, five pounds, or you can get the one optic ready for a little under 800 bucks MSRP. If you add the 507K Holosun optic on it, which you have the option to be able to get that on it, yeah, it should. I don't know what it is now because we're still really, really early in this review. Like they're not for sale yet at the time of making this, but it should push it up to 300 bucks to make it around 1,000, 1,100 bucks out the door to have an optic ready subcompact pistol with all the gas pedal edges and the stippling, the cuts, uh, the uh, optic on it. Now, some of you heroes are already ready to rush the door before you even hear my pros and cons list. You should listen to my pros and cons list. I appreciate you wanting to get the gun, but just in case you can't wait, you can go to sportsmansguide.com, type in war poet. This should pop up uh, and you can choose between the combat or the uh, version with the optic. I think optics are amazing so that you should get that one. That's almost everything I have now has optics on it. And that's what I really, really like. And that's the only thing I carry anymore, unless it's on an ankle. For those of you who are actually patient can do my pros and cons. We'll do that now. Pro number one is it's a tiny gun and that's re it just can't be stated how important that is. If it's comfortable and easy to conceal, you're more likely to carry. And what I want is all you guys out there carrying all the time. If something goes sideways out there, but there's a warrior poet on watch, you're able to be able to distribute justice and rescue people. And that's, our whole deal and so you make the world safer by carrying often. I found there's a lot of days where I just don't want to carry and it's kind of like man this is a big girl 
It's a big girl. You just know it's you know it's there. Uh, not always, but just sometimes it just starts wearing on my lower back. I'm getting older, just that weight. Now I'll, I'll ditch the extra mag, so it's just the gun sometimes and that'll help. And then I mean, it just helps to be able to reduce weight, reduce size. It can be a real, real good thing. So uh, small guns good. That's what she said. <laughs> And also, uh, my wife is never, ever going to carry a big gun like this. She carries a Glock 43, and I will be upgrading her to the CR920 for sure. Pro number one, super tiny. Yay for that. Pro number two is round capacity, whereas you look at the Glock 43, and it's the same size, this is a six round plus one. However, this one is a 10 rounder plus one. Now, these are proprietary mags by Shadow System, so it's a little bit lame, and this will be a con, uh, that you can't use like the Shield Arms mags or the Glock mags, but I would say it's still pretty early in the subcompact market. Nobody's really nailed it. Like Magpul has their extra, uh, this isn't a Magpul magazine, but they have their extra kind of P mags, and those work in Glocks, and you really like that because you just have all these mags to be able to put this tiny little single stack Glock mag. It's six rounds. That's just not good enough for me, especially when SIG came out and made their 10 plus one. And once I had 10 plus one, it was really hard for me to look at a Glock 43 anymore with any love. So given that there isn't just some like ubiquitous magazine out there that's the standard or proprietary magazine that works with the gun, I am less bothered with that, but I wish other mags fit it as well. Uh, but to be able to really engineer these things so that you could make a true double stack, not a single stack or a uh, one and a half stack, this was a really good job. To be able to carry 11 rounds with a flush fit mag in this size is a engineering marvel. Way to go. We love it. It is because they made a very thin steel walls uh, as opposed to the thicker polymer walls of the Glock 43. This is a huge win in that I can have a small gun without a small limited round capacity. When I have the extended magazine, now this will carry 13. And so at this point, there's 10 plus one is 11 plus 13 is 24 rounds on me in this size package. Holy cow, way to go. That's a massive pro. Love that a lot. Third pro is, is that it comes optic cut and optic ready. Right now in 2022, it is extremely difficult to be able to have an optic ready with a good optic on it. You can get them out there, but it has the uh, optic that I don't like as much. It's variable only when you need an adjustable LED and a better red dot and that's this one this is the 507k which i put on this and i say this needs to be the optic on there because it is the best optic on the market at this time in this size bar none this is the other optic and this is on a glock 48 this was an extremely expensive gun this is probably like 1500 bucks to be able to get the slide sent off and cut and then seracoded and then the optic and then put on and then the extra shield mags and anyway uh, uh, the uh, tritium dots that ended up being expensive and now for around a grand to be out the door with a finished gun and a subcompact with an optic already on it there's no work there's no fuss and that is not a lot of money for what you get so i thought that was a fantastic plus optic ready or mounted right out of the gate love that big pro we've been too kind to the gun that's three positives so let's go ahead and draw a little bit of blood i had a couple stoppages out on the range in uh shooting we shot a lot today and when i got tired and soaked in sweat i had my cameramen stop running the cameras so that they could keep the guns running and so we tested it quite a bit we had two different failure to feeds one was by me did a spider web just follow me uh <laughs> You're going to keep that in there. I felt like this spider web just kind of sticking to me. If some, if some big thing starts crawling over my face, just give me, you know. give me the signal. Let you know. Like, John, you have a tarantula on your head. You're like, Roger that, buddy. Thanks. I had one failure to feed and one of my cameramen had a failure to feed. Now, granted, both were inside the 200 round break-in period. If a gun manufacturer claims that there is a break-in period, they get a free pass as far as I'm concerned during that break-in period, and then they get no passes after that. This was still in the 200 round break-in period. When I got the Glock 43, it would not run right until I'd put around a uh, 100, 200 rounds through it, and then it ran amazing. Mechanical things sometimes have break-in periods, especially when it's smaller with tighter tolerances. You got to do break-in stuff. And so those stoppages happened during the break-in period. So I give it a pass pretty much, but I still wanted to at least report that it did happen. There's an alpaca really close to me. That's Eileen. Hi, Eileen. 
you are ugly as sin. Yes, you are. Do you want to be in the gun review? That's Eileen. Uh, my wife named her that just so she could say, come on, Eileen. Yeah, you know. Yep, there she is. Come on, Eileen. So outside of that little break in period, the gun ran very, very well, smooth as it was intended. It was just eating everything. And really, as I was out presenting shooting, it didn't really feel much different from here to here. Now, that wasn't exactly true when I went for the reload because uh, that's smaller. So I had to be far more deliberate as I was doing stuff. So other than the reload, it didn't feel that much different, which I thought was really miraculous. I can fight with this gun. I can fight pretty darn well. The trigger was good. It's kind of duty ready. And so I don't put a lot of stock in of like the lightest, shortest trigger ever. I'm not gearing up to compete with a micro gun. That's not, the, that's not a thing, neither are you. You should be thinking about self-defense, and so what you want is not some tricked out uh, trigger. You want something that's got a, a good prep, a nice clean break, and a, a fairly quick reset. I, I want it to be somewhere around a five pound break. All right, that broke at 4.75 pounds. That one broke at 5.1 pounds. That one was at perfectly at five pounds. Right around five pounds, that's where I want a trigger to be breaking anyway. It's got a good prep. Uh, the trigger was good. It's exactly what I wanted from a trigger. I don't know why I keep talking to you. I'm supposed to be talking to you guys. Sorry about that. First day. All right, so let's hit another pro. It works with my Glock 43, 43X, and 48 holster. So if you already have one of those holsters, this should work. Now, it may not have that nice, good click exactly in place as you want it. So you may have to adjust some tension here and there because the trigger guard is in fact a little bit different, but all of my holsters that I tried it in, it did work. Speaking of compatibility, shield mags, I'm told, do work in these, so... You can try that. You would have to trade out the uh, mag ejection button for the shield one. I haven't tried that, so there you go. But if you have a bunch of shield mags, you should be able to make them fit. Now, it may not be perfectly flush or anything and hanging off a little bit, but you could be able to do that. The mag release can change sides, so whether you're a righty or a wrongy, it'll work for you, so that's great. It does not have a slide stop lever on this side. As a righty, that's good, I don't want it, but as a wrongy, you would want it over that. So let's go ahead and gig it for that as a negative. It doesn't have full ambidextrous controls. It just has the ability to change the mag release. So we'll go ahead and throw that up as a negative. Another plus, it's got a little Picatinny rail uh, spot there for a micro light if you wanted to. I call them, hey, shoot me lights. So I don't really like having those on. They're not strong enough to be able to power or blind, control, deceive, distract. It's just basically a searchlight and flashlights are bullet magnets. Hashtag take a low light fighting class, a low light tactics class specifically, which is different than just low light skills, low light tactics, get some force on force with white lights and you won't think about lighting the same way ever again. Flashlights are bullet magnets is a low light principle. But anyway, you have the option there. So yay for that. It also has a high undercut on the trigger guard, which I think is really, really cool. You have uh, ports right here in the slide, which do nothing. Really, I know what they're supposed to do, but really they're there because they look super cool. And that's it. If like it lightens it up so that it'll run. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It looks cool. That's, that's about it, guys. That's about it. Match grade barrel, which usually is it that important? Like having a match grade uh, barrel in a bigger gun isn't that big of a deal because the, the barrel length, typically if there's a miss, it won't be the barrel's fault. It's that you were just a little hair off. It's, it's in this size gun, match grade barrel or not, it's almost all the shooter's fault. I've had a world champion shooter tell me that. So you're not better than them. So if you get in the comments and troll, all you're saying to me is I'm better than a world champion in shooting. I'm like, I can't outshoot the barrel. But when it's a small gun, I think a match grade barrel is actually a little bit more important because you just don't have the distance here uh, to be able to really achieve that great spiral and get that round in tight. So I noticed when I shot this gun at distance, I was absolutely worse with this gun than I was this gun, but kind of up close and personal, I was a little bit better with a full size gun, I'm sorry, compact gun than a subcompact gun, which was marvelous to me. That was huge, that was amazing. 
So there's that. Also, the pistol grip, it's more closed in, so you're not accidentally putting your uh, reload in the wrong spot. And you can see it's a little bit flared out all the way around, which is really a good help, particularly when you're trying to do a reload on a subcompact gun. I was genuinely pleased with how my reloads went because I didn't go out and practice them. And I just grabbed the gun and started doing a course of fire and everything went pretty darn well. I didn't feel like I was doing one of those things went pretty well. So awesome. And time for a negative. Let's draw some blood. On the compact, I'm able to change out my palm swell. So on this gun, you can change the palm swells. It'll fit differently in your hand and it'll raise and lower the muzzle on your natural presentation, depending on what size palm swell you have it. And that means if you're used to shooting a SIG, you put in a different palm swell, a smaller palm swell, and now it fit, it presents more like a SIG or a 1911 or a shield. Or if you're used to shooting a Glock, you put in the biggest palm swell and that changes the telemetry. So now it points just like a Glock. And I really, really like that. I'm like, man, that is amazing. Way to go. But you can't do it on a subcompact. You just can't. So I don't gig them for it. I understand because of things like physics, you just can't do it. But I kind of miss it and I'll just kind of gig it because you gave it to me here and you took it away here. And so even if it wasn't your fault shadow systems, it's a negative. Put it up there. There you go. A positive, something that I like more than any of these other guns, the SIG or the Glock, you'll notice this beaver tail really comes in for an undercut. So if you ever get slide bite, ever, particularly with a subcompact, which is much easier to get slide bite, that's where the, the slide comes back over your hand and it cuts you up. Because of this beaver tail right here, it's going to help mitigate that a good bit. So that is an awesome move. That's a positive. Here's another positive. This is a multi-optic system. So just like the MR920 or the DR920, that's the, the bigger size of this, you're able to put multiple different optics on here. This is because they changed the fire control group inside the slide, compressed it, and took the screw so you could go all the way down through the slide. That allows you to be able to have a whole lot more leeway in what optics you'll mount on there. Before, you would have to cut your slide so that it would work with a specific optic. So if you wanted to change optics, well, you're screwed unless you can get in a, dip, a different adapter plate, but then even still, you just don't know. It's got to be cut for the optic and that sucks. Subcompact guns are still developing in this way. Uh, the Shadow System CR920 though has multiple optics that you can do it. However, at this time, there's really no optic you should be putting on there in this size other than the 507K. That's the optic right now. Don't get another one. It's just that one right now. There'll be other options out there, uh, but as of right now, this is the only one that I, I use on my stuff. There'll be others, but today, this is the one. So there you have it, guys. The CR920, specifically the War Poet version, if you really like our style and you want to support us. I'm about to get in my vehicle and drive to Alabama. I'm teaching a room clearing class. And in that room clearing class, a bunch of students are going to be using pistols and rifles to be doing up close engagements. The game changer of having an optic allows you to be able to threat focus. Threat focus is what you're naturally going to do. Almost no matter how you train, you're going to present, you're going to look at the target. It's going to be almost impossible, particularly in the very first flurry of a gunfight that happens to be right up in, in, in front of you. In a room clearing situation, the ability to threat focus is massive. And so I'm just telling you, if you guys haven't warmed up to what a big deal that optics are on guns, it is the future for professional pistol application. It's almost all I want now is I want optics on there because it allows me to threat focus and that is such a gargantuan massively huge deal so to be able to have that on a subcompact with all the stuff that i want this is the most advanced the best subcompact gun there is it is my new edc guys if you want to get your own visit sportsmansguide.com search the term war poet this guy will pop up and then you can put war poet as a code at checkout and that'll save you some love as well thanks for tuning in as always love you guys make sure you subscribe to the channel toggle notifications bell to all share comments tell me what i missed and how glad you are that i saved boudreaux's life i did that stuff with this gun it's got a save and a bunch of kills already doesn't matter that it's ip6 i did that i did that so Yay for that.
Long ago, I heard a phrase, and it went something like this. Most men live lives of quiet desperation. He is the CEO of Fit Body Bootcamp. One of the 500 fastest growing franchises in the world. I got tunnel vision, tunnel vision. Just started sweating. I could just barely breathe. Amongst these guys and myself, I've got the cadres, the instructors for the project. What was going to be this experience for men. Are we here for the project or are you? Every man ought to consider putting themselves through some high level of adversity and suffering and pushing through with enough self-awareness to see that they really do have more in the tank by way of mental toughness. To be a better human, you are going to have to.